It's going to give that a moment to start. OK, now um, this video is going to be a live walkthrough um, of uh, the beginning of the the assessment. And uh, the first step that we're going to do uh, in this is uh, we're going to look at the the data set. Now you would have been assigned a data set, uh, which I have talked about and covered in a different video. And um, but I'm going to do it on an unassigned data set, and uh, I'm going to walk through and talk through the process of converting one of these raw data sets to a uh, to a tidy data set just like you would for the assessment and I'll, I'll talk through the whole thing so um, if i just close this for a moment maybe it is that your data set that's been assigned uh, has been assigned in a zip file and this one's got a funny name yours will have a different name it will be like your um, student id so the first thing I'm going to do is just look inside the zip, and I've got a file called butterfly.csv. So I'm just going to unzip that to what will be my working directory. I've made a special folder called uh, tidy. I've just called it tidy on my computer. If I go up a, a, a folder, I, um, I've just made this tidy folder that I'm going to use for this analysis. OK, so there are a couple of steps for the assessment. If you if you look at the uh, guidance in the assessment guidance document, uh, and if you also look at the um, the boot camp page, 1.4 for data frames and read through the account of tidy data, one of the um, things is uh, that it should be in Excel format and it should have a two tabs. The first tab should be um, the data itself. And the second tab should be a data dictionary. And I see that this is a um, comma separated values file. I don't know if that helps us um, view it or not. It's kind of small, but uh, if we just open that, by default, it opens in Excel on my computer, but it's still a CSV file, so we still have to save it as a different file. But before I do that, I'm just going to open it and look at it in CSV format. I'm going to open with, I right clicked and I'm going to open with Notepad. I'm using Windows here. And uh, just like I expect, if I pull this out, I've got a row of variable names, and each of the columns are separated by a comma. And uh, each row is a row of data, and the data in each column is also separated by a comma. So it's comma separated values file. That's how it's for, uh, stored. So if I just open this in Excel, <clears throat> and I save as, I'm going to change the um, in this drop down menu the file type to an Excel workbook .xlsx. That's the first thing that I'm going to do, and I'm just going to save it. If I look back at my um, my folder here, <clears throat> now I have um, butterfly.xlsx. So that is my tidy data set um, data file that I would I would turn in. Now let's see um, what is happening here in the old chat. <clears throat> Okay, now I can see the chat in our room. So let's open the uh, Excel file. We've already got it open, in fact, and uh, we can see that it's Excel. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that we can see. I can fill the screen. The very first thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm going to I'm going to adjust the columns so that I can see what the um, what the header calls each of the variables. <clears throat> and I'm going to ask myself, does it adhere to tidy data and, and R requirements? So I'm looking for things up there like, um, are the words short and informative? 
that are the titles of the columns. Um, do they do any of them start with a number? Because that's forbidden. Do any of them have spaces in them? Because uh, that's also forbidden. And uh, you know, for this particular data set, what I see is that um, plot is um, is fine. And what I see is that uh, treatment is fine. If I if I look at plot, <clears throat> plot um, is the identity of probably of some plot that was sampled. I, I'm not going to look at the accessory information that's available to me and to every assigned data set for this. I'm just going to um, focus on the the actual data file for this. <clears throat> but um, I know that plot will be a factor. And it's a categorical factor, even though it's coded as a number. You know, the number in plot won't mean anything. It's not like there was a race and every plot has a rank that has meaning in the order it came in in a race. It's not like that. It's just the ID. We could call plot one Bob, probably. Treatment is also a, um, a factor. And it looks like we've got a couple of levels, vegetation and herbicide. If I just scroll down vegetation and herbicide. I could use some Excel um, tools like pivot tables and sorting in Excel to help me figure this out if I wanted to, but I'm not even going to waste the time to do that. I'm just now just getting a glance. Distance is a measure. Somebody asked before whether zeros should be coded as NA, as missing variables, but for most of the things in these data sets, that are curated here, a zero, unless it's specified somewhere in data you've been, information you've been given, a, a zero would, would definitely be a measurement. It's a measurement of the quantity zero. And a missing data would usually be coded as a, a space. There would be the absence of an entry or maybe NA or, or some other code that was provided to you. There's a date. Um, dates can be problematic. In R, so um, we we may you know choose to do something about that or not. But the visit date will this will read in as a probably as a character string of the the date. The visit number. So it looks like for plot one on a particular um, date. Um, here it says there were there were two visits. Uh, and one for each treatment on a particular date. So that's kind of the structure of the data set. There's a time. So it looks like the time is in 24-hour um, format, if I look at um, that. And there's uh, temperature. Now, um, I'm guessing this is in Celsius, just from uh, looking at the uh, at the data because it's a scientific data set it should be in celsius clouds now it looks like there's a code one or two so again it's coded with a number but that's a factor a categorical factor and it probably maybe even has an order um, so i would have to look for information about that but for now i'm just going to treat it as a factor i just have to keep in mind that it's going to read in as a number uh, wind level it's also a categorical factor wind speed so this is a measurement, a numeric variable. Richness is probably the um, the uh, number of species of butterflies. Again, I might have to read that, but species richness is a biodiversity measure. And abundance is the total number of individuals, probably of butterflies. So uh, if we have time at the end and people want to, I'll, I can chase this up to figure out this exactly. But I think I want to focus on just getting this in a tidy data format. Second thing. So I'm going to make a new tab. I just clicked on this plus button at the bottom, and I'm going to call this the dictionary. Now, the easiest way to do this, I'm actually happy in this case with all of those names. I don't need to change them or anything. I, I'd invite you only to change the names if they violate the tidy data principles. They're short. They don't have spaces. They're not sp they're, they uh, maybe are named something that's not informative. There would be a few reasons to name them those amongst them, but these are just fine. So I'm going to copy these. 
And when I go over to my data dictionary, I'm going to um, go to the second row and I'm going to um, paste and I'm going to paste special and I'm going to transpose. So that it takes that that row of data and makes it into a column of data. So they'll all be in the same. Order now. Plot treatment distance. Plot treatment distance. So now I'm just going to make the dictionary plot and I'm going to make this big. We just want two rows. This is the variable. I made this capital on purpose because it matches the way the variables are over here, but it's just a little detail. I couldn't help myself to notice. And here is going to be the description. <clears throat> plot. This is a um, <clears throat> Categorical factor. <clears throat> and uh, if I just look and see, I might go to the. Um, looks like there are. Um, goes from one up to twenty five. Put these in quotes. Notice that I specified it's a categorical factor and I give an idea of the values of what the factor level names are. The treatment is. Um, it's also a categorical factor, two levels, vegetation and herbicide. Herbicide and vegetation. Distance. <clears throat> that looks like some kind of linear measure. Now, I may have information available to me about what measurement this is. Um, so, you know, you would endeavor to find that and include it in the dictionary if it's available to you. For now, I'm not going to do that. Again, I'm going to focus just on getting in the tidy data format, but it will be better um, if that was present, if it's available. And if it's not available, I would uh, probably make a note here that the uh, details of the measurement are not available. So I'm going to numeric measurement distance units unknown. And I'll give an approximate um, ranges from zero to approximately 50. And I'm just going to double check the range. And uh, you know, you you might just cut to the chase and read this in in uh, in R. And now that I look at the distance um, closely, it's not just the distance from um, from uh, one uh, zero one to fifty, but um, it looks like it's uh, possibly categorical zero one or fifty. So uh, I have a decision here. This is a little bit of ambiguity that's subjective already in this data set. So to resolve this, I would probably need to look at the accessory information. But again, for here, um, I say. I will say NB, note well, possibly categorical. Row 150 or numeric. Okay, visit number. So this is going to be, um, now this is a categorical variable, it's just one or two. And uh, maybe they visited in the day or the night. We could we could figure that out pretty easily. Um, now it says this is the second of herbicide at a different date. 
This is the second herbicide at a different date. So it's the second one herbicide for plot one at distance one. This is the second vegetation at distance zero. So maybe visit number is uh, the um, within each distance that was measured. OK, again, this is something I need to explore myself to figure this out. So for now, I'm going to say it's a uh, visit number is a um, categorical factor. One or two. Ordinal. So it's got an order to it, an order, an ordinal factor. Visit date. So that's the date. Date has a special um, has a special variable type. Um, so we, if we wanted to analyze date, we would have to figure out how to handle that. It, it's kind of a ornery variable in Excel, and it's also a little ornery in R. It's, it's ornery in every kind of um, stats software or data storage software but you know we could choose to ignore the date if we wanted to um visit time <clears throat> time variable four hour scale temperature temperature numeric Celsius, and I don't, I don't think that um, there are any decimals. Yeah, there are. So, so it's accurate to um, one decimal. Clouds. It's categorical. One or two. So I don't know what that means. Um, factor one or two. Uh, wind level. It's also one or two. Wind speed is numeric. We don't know the um, the um, units, so we can do the next two. Wind level, get a oracle factor, one or two, meaning we don't know. Wind speed, numeric measurement, units, we don't know. Richness. I'm going to go ahead and make an educated guess that this is species richness. I'll just go ahead and spell out um, what that means. It's the um, number of butterfly species. Counted. And abundance is the number of individual butterflies counted. If you don't have, uh, if you've never collected biodiversity data and it wasn't obvious to you what richness or abundance was, you know, you would just have to reflect that in the dictionary if that accessory information wasn't available to you. So uh, if I want to assess this real quick, <clears throat> what I'm looking at, what I'm feeling with this, even without any information looking at it we'll look at the excel spreadsheet and see what information there is in just a moment here i would i would say okay it's about butterflies because the name of the data set they provided said butterflies it's probably an experiment because they've got a treatment variable that they call treatment and um it says herbicide or vegetation so there's there's probably some herbicide application uh in this experiment and they've got um, some repeated measures. So I'm already thinking, okay, uh, with repeated measures, this would 
this could fit for the uh, my third hypothesis it could fit a mixed effects model so if you repeatedly measure non-independently a plot then plot could be a random effect so i'll just store that in the back of my mind for later it's got date it's got the uh, something to do with distance, which might be a category or it might be a measurement. It's got some other environmental variables like um, temperature, cloud, uh, something to do with wind level. Now, uh, it would be nice to know for this um, the details about what these mean. Whether, for example, whether um, the cloud category of one versus two is is one no clouds and two is the presence of clouds or is one a little bit of clouds and two is a lot of clouds or what is it we don't know we may not be able to figure that out but i still could analyze clouds um and i could ask do there tend to be more butterfly species relative to how many clouds there are so i'm, I'm thinking about things like this um so at the moment i'm 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 happy with this but i want to to make this perfect i want to go back and um, dig a little deeper and see if i can uncover some meaning in some of these variables to add to my data dictionary to make it just right so the way that we would do that is um we go back to um the assignment and I'll look up the data assignment. I'm just going to turn off my screen real quick here while I do this. I guess I don't have to turn off my screen because I did. Um, I think I did provide that to everybody. I was thinking there might be some student names in there, but I don't think there are. So let me open that up here real quick. I'll reshare my screen. Okay, I need to restart my Excel. I'm having a little Excel moment here. Ah, there we go. Okay, I'm just going to reshare my screen. There we go. So uh, you'll notice if you want to get that extra information, the meta information about your data set, for each one of these, I've, I've provided this link. So you would have looked down here and found your, your student ID, um, say for for this person, the name of the data file, and then there's a link also associated with your assigned data set. So the data set that I used was this one, XXX01. It was an unassigned data set. And my link is here. So I'm just going to copy my link and um, maybe try to um, just, just go to that link on the web. So um, here, some of these data sets will have actual published papers as associated with them. And uh, if there is um, a published paper, you may want to go to it. In a lot of cases, I'd probably say, I won't, I won't say you shouldn't go to it, but I would probably say that you could do perfectly fine without going to it and save the time uh, from going to it. But if it's there, and if you wish, you could go to it, but every one of these is going to have a data abstract with it. So I could read. Um, they they have the authors have chosen to share their data and make it publicly accessible. And uh, there might be information to um, to uh, the meaning of all of those variables in here in here. So let's kind of look at, at one of the variables that we're interested in. So uh, we have a number of plots, treatment, distance, um, visit number is categorical, you know, the order that they visited the plots in, the date and the time are self-explanatory, but um, temperature, now this is, this is probably 
in Celsius, but that's one that we could just confirm. Um, the clouds in the wind level are categorical that we need to figure that out. Wind level, wind speed, we don't know the units. Richness and abundance, um, we can confirm that that is the number of butterfly species and the abundance of individual butterflies counts. Okay, so I would just read through this and confirm that. Um, and I'm just going to glance at it now for the purposes of, of this. Now, this particular page had uh, several data sets, but I've only, um, I've only assigned the one data set to that zip. And so there are a few other data sets that are like that, where um, there may be more than one data sets, but you will only have been assigned one data set. So it's a little attention to pay attention to that detail. And uh, there is a um, a metadata file. So if we um, if we see here, I, I saw this that there is a metadata CSV that wasn't included in my zip, and it says it contains a list of column names and descriptions for all files. So uh, a little detective work here, and I can download. The original data with that metadata set and it'll probably answer all of our questions. So let's do that. So I'm just going to open that data set, open the metadata file. And I've got my butterfly data set. Now people are sending chats. Okay. Um, and here we go. We've got some um, some data dictionary info for um, for our butterfly data set. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy those and compare it to the ones that I did and see how we did. So I'm just going to, as a placeholder, I'm just going to put those in there. like um, if I cut and I put it down there, there we go. So plot number was um, the plot number, categorical factor, okay. Treatment, um, now it said adjacent crop, but in this data set that I have, I don't see the adjacent crop, but uh, I think I like mine better than the one that the authors put. Distance from field edge in meters, 0, 1, 10, or 50. I don't think I saw any 10s, but they, it might be present there. Let's see if we glance at any 10s. Now, I don't see any 10s in mine, so again, I'm going to stick with mine. But um, they did clarify that it's in meters. So I can fix that. Number of butterflies, let's see here. Sampled. Okay, so uh, I'm going to make sure that my uh, yeah, number of butterflies sampling round during the season is visit number. So um, I like actually their description better than mine in that case. So I'm going to do that date variable. They specify the format. That's even better than mine. I'm going to add that to mine. Time of sampling, 24 hour scale. Uh, they have the format. Temperature during the visit, Celsius, and I guess correctly. Categorical factor, one or two, meaning. I can put that in there. Wind level, they've got the definition. Numeric measurements, and it's got the units. Butterfly richness, butterfly abundance. Now they don't do that, but it's jargon terms in ecology and biodiversity. So I'm pretty pleased with that. That worked out pretty well. And uh, if I look at this, and I turned this in, this would be a, uh, a perfect tidy data set. 
I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now and uh, ask if anybody has any questions and we can decide what we want to do. The next thing that I would do before I even started making my objective is I would start a script from a tidy script to read in my data set and set up my table of contents. So if people want to do that, we have just enough time to do that tonight. Of course, I can share this video and everything else, but I'm going to stop this video here.